One of the biggest issues you'll often run into with machine learning is having your model underfit or overfit your data. Let's talk about what those terms mean, how you can spot them, and what you can do to fix them. Remember that in our classification example, we are generally trying to separate the features of two or more classes. Here is a very simple example of classification with only two dimensions. This would correspond to a data set where each sample has only two features that we are feeding to the model. Because it's only two dimensions, we can easily plot all or a subset of our samples. For the sake of this example, let's say that this is the entire training set. Let's train a very simple machine learning model on this data. In fact, this model is basically a simple threshold for one of the dimensions. Anything less than that threshold belongs to the circle class, and anything greater than that threshold belongs to the triangle class. It's incredibly simple, it's fast, and it might work in some cases. However, it's not very accurate, as you can see. In this case, we would say that the model is underfit. It fails to capture any of the grouping or trends in the data. Next, we choose a somewhat complex machine learning model and let it train on this data. After a while, we find it does a really good job of separating the two classes, and with further testing, we find that it works well on unseen data too. This unseen data can be something like the validation set or the test set. However, you'll often find that with neural networks, if you let them train for too long, they'll begin to overfit the training data. The model begins to capture every nuance in the data set molding itself to perfectly fit the training data. What you'll find is that while you might get a great accuracy score on the training data, this model will perform terribly on new data it has never seen before. The easiest way to spot underfitting and overfitting is to look at how well the model performs on the training data versus the validation data. You could also use the test set instead of the validation set, but if you find problems with the model on the test data and tweak the model, you've introduced some bias into the model from the test set. Because of this, it's best to use the validation set to spot problems with the model and make adjustments before using the test set. Spotting underfitting is relatively easy. The model simply won't work well at all, regardless of which data set you use. In the ideal case, the accuracy with the training data and validation data will both be high. You likely won't get to 100% accuracy, but depending on your use case, 80 to 90% may be good enough. Overfitting happens when the model picks up the nuances in the training data without generalizing to the overall trends in the data. You can spot this by looking at the validation set accuracy. If it's much lower than the accuracy from the training data, it usually means the model Model has been overfit to the training data. What do you think overfitting will look like if we used loss instead of accuracy? You can also spot overfitting and underfitting using loss instead of accuracy. It should look much like the opposite of accuracy as loss should decrease over time with training. For an underfit model, the loss will not significantly drop over time. A good fit shows both the validation and training data loss dropping together over time. Note that most of the time, you would expect the training data to perform slightly better than the validation or test data. That's not always the case, but they should be close if the model is well fit to the data. Finally, in the overfit fit case, the training data will have very little loss, but the validation data will still have a large loss. Spotting and fixing underfitting is usually pretty straightforward. Essentially, it means that your model isn't good enough or you're not giving it the right kind of data. A good solution for many machine learning problems is to gather more data to see if that fixes things. In general, you can't go wrong with collecting more data. Just make sure it's unbiased and representative of what you want to accomplish. Perhaps the features you're extracting do not provide enough separation. In that case, you may want to try calculating a different set of features from the data or adding more features onto to what you already have. Sometimes the model just needs longer to train. I've worked with complex object detection models that need 20,000 epics to even begin seeing a drop in the loss with the training set. This is usually a good first step and relatively easy to do. Try to train for longer and if the model is still not improving, then try other methods. Sometimes your model is just not complex enough to capture the trends in the data. In this case, you will want to play around with adding more layers or nodes in your neural network to see if that makes a difference. And sometimes your approach isn't the right one for the problem at hand. Neural networks might not be the best tool for the job, so you will want to do some research about your particular problem to see what other forms of machine learning might work. 
Overfitting is a much more sinister problem and can often be tricky to fix. Vast amounts of research has been done trying to address the problem of overfitting in machine learning. Once again, getting more data rarely hurts you. One trick is to use early stopping. If you see the accuracy on the validation set rise and then begin to fall, like in our example here, you could tell the model to train again but stop after a number of epochs that give us the best validation. This is a bit of a band-aid solution as it does not address the ultimate issue issue of the model eventually overfitting to the training data. However, this can be an easy trick to get a useful model quickly. Note that Edge Impulse automatically does early stopping for us. The training tool makes a copy of the model during each epoch of the training process and picks the model with the best validation results. Often, the more complex a model is, the more it tends to overfit the data. As a result, you could try using a less complex model, such as by removing layers or nodes in a neural network. Regularization is a technique that attempts to address overfitting by penalizing the loss function for more complex models. With this, the model will attempt to fit to the data using the least complexity possible. By default, Edge Impulse adds L1 regularization terms to our basic neural network. Because of this, you do not need to worry about adding them manually, but you can try adjusting them if you'd like to see how it affects things. Dropout is a technique used with neural networks that randomly ignores the output of some nodes during training. This forces the remaining nodes, or neurons, to take on more responsibility ability for fitting to the data. As a result, it can often reduce overfitting by the whole model. If you run across underfitting or overfitting, these can be some good techniques to try. A lot of machine learning is tweaking your data, features, or model, retraining, and then seeing how well the model works with unseen data. A lot of it is just guessing and learning what works and doesn't work.